Hey guys, in this tutorial, we're going to go over the basic fundamentals of using Git together with VS Code Editor. The cool thing about VS Code Editor is that there are no Git extensions you need to install. Everything is going to be available through the source control button. And we're going to be using this button a lot in this tutorial. Now, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and download Git type download git on Google, go to the first search result and click on the download for Windows. Just choose the installer that matches your system. So go ahead and launch the file and go through the installation. Just basically click next for the most part. In the last step of the installation, make sure that the top checkbox is selected. Now click on the finish button and on the bash window we're going to check and make sure that the git has been successfully installed. So go ahead and type git dash dash version and hit enter. If you see a message with git version, you're ready to start using git in VS Code. Now here on the right hand side, I have my GitHub open on the homepage. Make sure you have a GitHub account and you're logged in and you will see this page. Now we're going to create a new repo just for this tutorial. So go ahead and click on the green button and type the name of your new repository. I'm going to type Apple. Make sure it's public and click on the green button to create the repository. Now GitHub is going to give you a bunch of instructions on how to initialize the repo and we're going to go through all this in the next step. So go ahead and go to your VS Code editor, go to the file menu and click on open folder. Here I'm going to actually create a new folder for this project and call it Apple. So let's go ahead and do just that on the C drive. I'm going to click on the new folder button here. I'm going to name this folder Apple and click on the select folder button, which in VS Code will start a new project. Then you want to close all this crap that's going to start popping up when you create a new project. Um, just close that all up. Now, the first thing we want to do is initialize a git project in this folder. So go ahead and go into the terminal, new terminal. Now in the terminal command line, which will open in a project directory, start typing git init. The same exact thing can be accomplished by going to the source control button and clicking on this blue button right here to initialize the repository. But we're going to go ahead and just do that on the command line instead. Once you hit enter, you will see the message that we initialized an empty git repository. And the blue button in the upper left corner is going to disappear. Now let's go ahead and go to the project button and start a new file by clicking on this button here. So I'm going to call this file index.html. Because we're using source control, as soon as you add a new file, you will see this notification in source control button. This basically means that a new file has been added to the project, but it still needs to be staged, committed and pushed to the repo. So every time you add a new file or make changes to existing files, it needs to go through this three stage process where you stage the file, commit the file and push it to the repository. We're going to take a look at how that works through the rest of this tutorial. So first I'm going to add some content to our index.html file. Don't forget to save the file, that's important. You can do a lot of the same stuff directly from VS Code UI, but in this tutorial we're simply going to use the command line. For example, to add a new file to stage, you can simply go to source control button and click on that plus button over there but we're going to do the same thing from the command line. So we're going to put this file on stage by typing git add index.html. Hit enter. In the upper left corner UI, you'll notice that index.html file has been added under a new folder called staged changes. Now that the file is staged, we can commit it. Go ahead and type git commit dash m open double quotes and type your commit message and then hit enter. At this point, you'll notice the source control sidebar has changed to this publish branch button. Clicking on that will do exactly the same thing as clicking on this cloud button in the lower left corner. 
we can click on that but again we're going to do the same exact thing from the command line this is an optional step but we're going to rename our branch to main by running git branch dash m main when you do that you'll actually notice your branch name change in the lower left corner next we're going to link our local repo to our remote repo this is only done once per project and it's the longest git command from this entire tutorial so go ahead and type git remote add origin and then type the url to our project which is github.com slash username slash name of the project which was apple.git and we're finally ready to push our staged index.html file to the remote repository go ahead and type git push dash u origin main now this one-time command works together with the previous command but in the future if you need to push something you will always just use git push without all that other crap go ahead and hit enter and this will actually push our index.html file to our remote repo so in order to check that let's go to github open the project and you will see that the file has been actually uploaded to the repo if i click on the file you will see the content is now hello period if you want to update the file again and send it to the repo you want to change the content of the file and save it but this time we will stage and push it using the vs code ui so go to the source control button and click on this plus button here that will put this file on stage it's exactly the same as running git add index.html on the command line now type your commit message into this box and hit control enter now that you've committed the file click on this blue button to sync changes and that will push our new changes to our remote repo it's the same thing as running git push on the command line now let's go back to our github and you will see that the changes have been pushed and actually physically changed in that file on the remote repository now the whole point of github is so you can work with other people on the same project so I'm going to change this file directly from the GitHub, which will create the same effect as if somebody else changed it. So I'm going to go into the edit button and update the content of our index.html file. And then I'm going to save the file in the repository. So now what we have in the repo is different from our local file. So I'm going to update the local file, stage it, commit it and push it to the repo. But this time when we do that we're going to create a merge conflict and it's going to look like this so here you have a choice either to select your own version or merge it manually with whatever they typed different ids do this differently but basically you can start typing directly into this text area and change that part of the code in any way you wish i just wanted to show you the git merge example in vs code in this part so i'm not going to go very far into the process so i'm just going to click accept current change which will force my version of the file to be pushed to the repository then commit your merged changes as usual and the merged file will appear in the remote repository now if you want to go back to the very first state of the commit that we did in this tutorial Reset your commit timeline by typing git reset dash dash hard head caret character. If you keep calling this command, you'll continue making steps back in your commit history. Here I went all the way back to the original state this file was in when we started this tutorial. This is usually done in extreme cases where you messed something up and you want to go back to the previous state of the project and once you apply the new changes you can go through add commit and push process all over again and submit your changes to the repository again now there's a lot more to the workflow you can do stuff like rebase fork and all kinds of things but this is as far as i'm going to go in this tutorial and hopefully it was helpful for someone who's just starting out with vs code git workflow